Welcome to the Select Board meeting of Monday, February 10th, 2020. I am Diana Mahan. To my right, your left. John Hurd. Joe Curo. Steve DeCourcy. Adam Chaplin. Doug Heim. Ashley Miller. Um, our colleague, Mr. Dunn, unfortunately, was hoping he'd feel better by the end of the day and, and hasn't. So um, I hope he feels better soon, as well as um, Mrs. Kropelka, our board administrator. But I know they're watching at home, so we'll be on our best behavior. Um, first item on the agenda, approval of sale of $200,000 sewer bond to the MWRA. We have our treasurer and collector of taxes, Ms. Marshall. Good evening. Thank you. I'm here because... In accordance with um, the town meeting vote last April for Article 61 authorizing the participation in an MWRA grant loan program for um, $600,000 worth of grant and $200,000 <coughs> of bond for repair to inflow and infiltration of our sewer system. And the grant is substantial and the borrowing is two hundred thousand dollars of interest-free lo loan that is payable over ten years I'm available for any questions you have um, it's for the design bid design bid construction and um, flow tests to verify that we've made the improvements thank you first is there a motion to approve by so mr. Carroll Second. seconded by mr. Hurd any questions or comments by my colleagues if not on a motion by mr. Carroll seconded by mr. Hurd all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. Those opposed unanimous vote thank you for all your work on thank this you. I know thank you thank you very much for your approval thank you good evening and agenda item two for approval Arlington Jazz Festival banners I think we know who's going to represent but if you can just say your name for the record uh, I'm Dan Fax um, director of the Jazz Festival. So uh, we moved the, the date of it a little later this year to um, the middle weekend in May. So um, our hopes is to have the two banners up on the west side of Route 60 um, by the beginning of April, if possible. Um, or any, any date, if, if it needs to be later, is fine. Or any part of Mass Ave if that doesn't work. So okay. that's just my preference. You'll, I don't know if you've started the process again, but coordinate with the select board office in terms yeah. of what's available and when DPW can. Okay. <clears throat> Is there a motion to approve by? So moved. Mr. Carroll, seconded by? Second. Mr. DeCourcy. Um, any questions or comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, we now have our consent agenda, minutes of meetings, January 27th, 2020, uh, Patriots Day Committee events, April 19th, 2020. It's it just a, a raise of a hand. Is someone here from the Patriots Day Committee? So I'll read the events then. Uh, 56th Annual Patriots Day Fun Run at 8.45 a.m. along Mass Ave. The Monotomy Reenactment at 12 noon at the Jason Russell House. The Patriots Day Parade at 3 p.m. Um, and that's submitted on behalf of the Patriot State Committee Chair, Christine Bongiorno. We have reappointments, Board of Youth Sor Services, Lori Pescatori, Library Board of Trustees, Heather Galvin, Jonathan Gates, Library Board of Trustees to correct term ending date, Adam Del, Del Molino, Amy Hampy, request special one-day beer and wine license, 3720 at the Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event, Harris Diamond and Jessica Grant, Request special one-day beer and wine license 31420 at Leslie Ellis School for a private event. Jeanette Keller on behalf of Leslie Ellis School and appointment of new election workers. Dora Mischella of Harvard Street. Beverly Panettieri on Mass Ave. Juliet A. Fierman Wolf of Grandview and Stanley F. Wolf also of Grandview. First, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda by... Uh, move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Moved by Second. Mr. Hurl, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Is there anyone here for any items on the consent agenda? Any questions or comments from my colleagues? If not, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. We now go a little bit after five minutes. Our 715 public hearings. First, we have Jackie Jacqueline Duffy, Supervisor Rights and Permits, on behalf of Eversource. Ms. Duffy. 
Um, good evening. NSTAR Electric would like to install a hip guy on Mass Ave, and this is to support poll 847 over 29 on Mass Ave. Is there a motion to approve? approval? By Mr. Hurt. Second. Seconded by Mr. Carroll, subject to all conditions um, contained Second. therein. Uh, a public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak to Eversource petition, Mass Ave? Any further questions or comments by my colleague, Mr. DeCourcy? Thank you, Madam Chair. It's a question. Um, this is my first approval of a hip guy. I'm wondering if you can tell us what that is. A hip guy kind of looks like almost like a chin-up bar. That's how I explain them. And it just goes straight across and down. That way no one will walk into it. Okay. All right. And it, does it go across the sidewalk or is it on between the sidewalk and the street? The, it goes on at the back of the sidewalk near okay. the grass. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? If not, on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank, Thank you, you so much. So good to see you. Next, we go to National Grid Petition, Browning Road. Um, uh, Madam Mr. Chair, Dorsey. yeah, I'm going to recuse myself from this uh, item as I do work for National Grid. We'll just wait till he steps out. One second. The abundance of caution. There's nothing <laughs> untoward. If you could just say your name and request. Uh, good evening. I'm Barbara Kelleher. I'm a representative from National Grid. And the National Grid hereby respectfully requests your consent to install and maintain approximately 25 feet, more or less, of six-inch gas main in Browning Road, Arlington. From the existing gas main just past House 25, southwesterly to House Number 21, in order to provide a gas service to number 20 and number 21 Browning Road. Is there a motion first by? Move approval subject to all conditions. Mr. Hurd, second it by? Second. Mr. Kiro, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone here? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. National Grid Petition, Browning Road. Um, any further questions or comments from my colleagues? I just want to make sure the minutes do reflect that Mr. DeCourcy stepped out yep. prior to hearing this. On a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, unanimous vote, 3 0. Good to see Thank you. Thank you. Good night. And the minutes can reflect that Mr. DeCourcy returned for agenda item 11. Thank you. Agenda item 11 for approval, common vitula license. <coughs> Happy Belly Eats of Mass Ave. Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm Jason Carter here for uh, approval for the common vic. <coughs> taking over the uh, former Retro Burger, or still Retro Burger at the moment. Um, Is there anything else you'd like to say about it? It's going to basically sort of yeah, be the so same, uh, or are you going to add? Sorry, my first. That's okay. No. <laughs> my first one. So it's going to be a similar concept, um, quick serve restaurant, uh, kind of fun over-the-top burgers, over-the-top um, gourmet hot dogs, really cool fried chicken sandwiches, still offer some shakes. Um, some over-the-top shakes as well that kind of have some fun cakes and desserts on top. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's really about it. So quick serve, 20 seats roughly. Um, not much renovation, just kind of beautifying the place a little bit and redoing the kitchen a little to, to make it uh, um, good with the health department. Excellent. My family is one way they like their onion rings made is if I don't make them at home. <laughs> the hand battered. Pain. And so I'm not telling you you have to keep them the same or whatever, but I just we've, want to We've know. talked about it. I think, uh, I think that's a staple that should be on a menu. So. Yeah. We can't find it anywhere else in Arlington. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, one place in Lexington. Not a lot of burgers. So. <laughs> but it's your yeah. business and your um, <laughs> menu. And I'm taking it in consideration. Yeah. I promise. Uh, first, is there a mo motion to approve? Uh, uh, Motion to approve subject to all conditions as set forth. By Mr. Kier, is there a second? Second. By <coughs> Mr. Hurd, any questions? Of Mr. Question. Hurd? And this is an important one for my decision. Of course. Are you keeping the jukebox? Uh, so Bill is taking that. He, he, he wrote it in. All he right. has to take it. It's his pride right. and joy. I'm not but so old. Will, Well, my boys do like playing with that. It's like, <laughs> what's this? I'll, uh, I'll provide like a little iPad. We can, okay. we can play with some music. Would be good. I wish I could keep it though. So you got onion rings and stuff for the kids to play with. There we go. That's a. <laughs> and you're going. You're going to be where Retro Burger is currently. 
I'm sorry? You're going to be where Retro Burger Correct. is currently. I just want yes. to make sure. Because people actually do watch this. <laughs> oh, they do. Okay. And, uh, on a motion, any further questions or yeah. comments, Mr. Kiro? Just wondering, when are, you, when are you hoping to open? Uh, probably mid to late April. Okay. Best case scenario, worst case scenario, first week in May. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. We'll look forward Looking to it. Looking forward to it. Yep. Any further questions or comments on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Hurd? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. We now will start our warrant article <coughs> hearings. We have three. They are not as yet numbered because we're, we still have the draft warrant. That's been compiled <coughs> and it will be finalized soon. First, we have bylaw amendment regulation of outdoor lighting, up lighting. Is anyone here for that? I would anticipate Mr. Schlickman would have been here. Do you think he's coming maybe? No. You don't think so? Oh, okay. You know what I'll do is uh, maybe I'll move on to the other two. The oh. council has something. Oh, Attorney Heim. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. If, if you like, I think it's a relatively straightforward matter, but I can also understand the board's practice in this matter is, is not always to proceed if, uh, mm -hmm. if a citizen petitioner is a resident petitioner is not present but I, if you like I'm, I'm prepared to talk about it but I'm gonna ask you to do that I'm just gonna take the other two just in case he comes um, uh, if that's okay with my colleagues yep. uh, only because I know he posted about it on Facebook and things unless I'm dreaming uh, the bylaw yeah. amendment Minuteman bikeway hours um, mr. chapter lane did you want to speak to that or who is there anyone here to speak to the <coughs> Minuteman Bikeway hours as the proponent. If you, yes, please. Hello, Christopher Tonkin, um, uh, Precinct 20, Chairman of the Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee. Uh, Adam McNeil was actually going to present, but he got delayed, and we didn't oh, anticipate the uh, schedule going quite so far. So, I'm the default. Um, for many years, we've felt it's been kind of an acronym that the uh, bikeway has official hours that uh, are the same as the um, standard park hours in Arlington, whereas Lexington and, Lexington and Bedford do not. And many of the users of the bikeway, especially in the east part of the town, um, arrive from Alewife and walk up or cycle up the, the bikeway, uh, therefore breaking the law. So we wanted to try and um, bring this more into sort of... Uh, harmony with the other two towns and the bikeway and also you know in in with practice so we held consultations with the police and uh, we came up with um, a suggestion that we, we change the hours as, as uh, stated so as i didn't wasn't totally prepared to talk i, I can't tell you what the hours are without checking what you've got there um, but that's what we, we've done that's what we're proposing that's what we're looking for i think we have um, support from the apd on this uh, we had consultations with them the planning department's also supportive of this, and um, that's where I want to leave it for now, I think. I think it's a great idea. Um, it's a, uh, anyone else want to? I, I would just uh, verify what Christopher just mentioned, that uh, after their back and forth, I believe, with the police department, yep. they think they had a very good dialogue, and the police department is supportive of their proposal, as is the planning department. And I think the, the only thing I would add, and I, <clears throat> I don't think this is a hindrance at all, is these discussions will likely lead to people in the community talking about lighting the bike path in some shape or form. And I think those discussions are, those are things that people talk about in the community anyway, but I think this might spur it a little more. It's not something we currently have in the capital plan. Uh, it's something we are interested in potentially studying. So I, I don't offer that for any action, but just for the board's information that um, with approving this, we should expect a discussion in the future about lighting. If, Probably not all, but portions of the bikeway. Yes, if I can add, um, it's one of the suggestions we get most frequently when we talk to people is, why don't you have it lit at night? Um, it is pretty dark mm -hmm. and a bit foreboding at times, and um, some people find it a little scary, but people still use it. The other thing I wanted to, to mention, which I didn't, that uh, the APW was quite ha would be happy to review how it's been working after six months or so, a year and either sort of either extend the hours to longer or abolish them totally uh, depending how how it goes when, when we had the verbal discussions with them I haven't seen the written um, letter that the acting chief sent I'm not sure yet and um, I think this is excellent I, and I don't know if it's still a, a venue or a source of recourse but um, 
when we got the lights um, up on the Pierce Field, um, yep. it was not only to light Pierce Field, but also illumination of the bike path in that area. Yes, it um, certainly works. I don't know if that's yeah. still an opportunity that's available, but I'm, I'm sure you all will explore that. Um, I'm not, you know, even if it's, we can only get it in one or two areas, to me it's one or two more that, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the things that helped to get it through was that it was sort of a dual use. It was illuminating the high school field, but also secondary illumination to the bike. Yes, I, I've come along there at night, and uh, coming along that part, it's, you can see where you're going, you can see people coming the other way, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's, there are other parts where it just, you get past there and it goes into darkness again. Pitch dark, yeah. Yep. Um, Purse, is there a motion? Uh, okay, do you want Is there anyone else who wanted to speak? Well, I'm just going to get the motion okay. on the table. And well, then I'll, I'll, well, I, I wanted. Okay. You wanna, you, okay. I wanted. I wanted to actually discuss it. Discuss okay. the, the, the motion. I wanted to ask a question before I make a motion. No, no, that's if fine. That's possible. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Kiro. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, I, I. I spoke to Mr. McNeil about this the other night, yes. and I and I, I think you went about it just exactly the right way, going and, and talking to the police department. And I'm fully supportive, also, of the idea, of um, extending the hours. I do have one question. I think for you and for the manager, though. Um, and something for my colleagues to, con to, to consider when you mentioned that conditions are different in different parts of the bikeway. That's, Certainly, that's, yes. That's for starters. But also, you know, the bikeway, when we have other decisions come before us around the bikeway, all other aspects of the bikeway are under the jurisdiction of the manager. So when we have to do a temporary closure for, for a um, road race or whatnot, we, we're deferring to the manager. And I'm wondering. Does it make more sense for our board to to make a, the the change such that the jurisdiction over the hours is squarely in with the manager mm -hmm. to to be able to have that that discretion so that if there is this pilot and there is a, a, a decision that geez, maybe we we should lengthen it, shorten it, or whatnot, you have that flexibility to do that, and you also have the flexibility to actually. <coughs> um, handle different parts of the bikeway differently, which would be kind of difficult in, in a bylaw yeah. situation. Yeah. So I don't know if you, and I probably should have talked to you about this beforehand, but I don't know if you have any thoughts about that. Yeah, does this need to be a warrant article or? I mean, I think it needs to be a warrant article to change the bylaw. To change it, for sure. <clears throat> but sure. but I, you, I hadn't thought about it before you just asked, uh, but I think like in, a, in some situations it would, removing it from the bylaw would allow it administrative flexibility. Right, so that we wouldn't, if we wanted to change it next year, we wouldn't have to come back to town meeting again to make a change. So, um, I mean, responding first blush, I think that would be appropriate to consider. And our understanding, I think, would be that you are, you are on board with the proposal as it's been, been presented for the hours that, that have been proposed initially, correct? Yeah, I would say if it was the prerogative of the board to take a vote like you just described, I would certainly accompany that vote with saying that I would set the hours at 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, with revisions to be made as necessary, similar to the action that's being requested. Okay. With that, I would like to make a motion to change the, the uh, relevant bylaw um, such that the jurisdiction over the, the um, hours of the Minuteman bikeway are given to the town manager. Second. Motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Attorney Heim. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. I'm just not sure whether that's within the scope of the Warren article. Ooh. So the Warren article reads, to see if the town will vote to amend Title Three, Article One, Section 10 of the town bylaws to extend the operating hours of the bikeway or take any action related thereto. I would want to get some, I would want to be able to confer with the moderator to ensure that he would consider that vote within the scope because, I'm sorry, it's my understanding that you're basically hoping to extend the hours by the motion and also confer on Mr. Ch on the manager the ability to modify those? Correct. I would, I would, like, to, I would like to have the same impact of, of actually writing it in, but, but give greater um, flexibility to the manager to, to adjust, J just as he has jurisdiction over all other matters relating to the bikeway. I see Mr. McNeil just walked in. There seems to be consensus up here that we're we're on board through the chair um, that we're on board with um, with the idea, but the the thought is that perhaps we should give the discretion to the manager to be able to administratively adjust the hours. 
Okay, so why don't we take that as the motion, um, and then town council, when he gets we'll back with our final research. draft, final votes and comments, if it's something that's beyond the scope, it'll reflect in there, and if not, it will be included. Yes, Madam Chair. Sure. Mr. Hurd, did you? No, I'm. That's fine. I was just going to say, can't we just confirm this article with the addition that future changes will be in the discretion of the town manager? But we'll defer to the final reading. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. McNeil, would you or anyone else like to speak to this Warren article? Go ahead. Sure. You can do this. Adam McNeil, uh, 19 Melrose Street. I'm going to guess that Christopher covered most of everything, but uh, it sounds like everyone's in consensus here. But if you guys had any questions for me about the origin of this or any, uh, any other things? It sounds like you guys no, okay. we've had a pretty good discussion about it. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you for following up on this. Thank you. Okay, and a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? And Attorney Heim will draft up our final votes and comments appropriately. Ms. Madam Chair. We'll know the second part. Um, Mr. Schluckman, I'm going to take one more because I put yours on hold because I assumed you would be here. Um, yeah, so. I was yeah. Uh, hello, who's chit? No, I'm only kidding. Hello, board. <laughs> I knew I'm only kidding. Um, next is vote appropriation school committee member stipends. Is anyone here to speak in favor of that? your discretion I can read her remarks sure you want to pull the microphone yeah. down just as a directional thank you yeah. so much I can read her remarks so this is uh, Krista Kelleher's um, words and, and her position I'm representing uh, members of the select board thank you for your consideration of the article I submitted to offer stipends to school committee members my professional work Krista's involves studying inclusion and equity in electoral leadership at all levels in Massachusetts I care deeply about promoting gender and racial equality in political leadership and addressing institutional barriers to both seeking and serving in office. I had two goals in mind when filling the article in collaboration with me, Jennifer Seuss. Ensure that all of Arlington's public servants are valued and that the concept of equ equity is realized in our policies and practices. Strengthen access to key leadership positions for all who may be interested in serving. I'd like to outline three reasons why it's important to take action now to establish stipends for school committee. First, it is imperative to value and respect the incredibly significant contributions made by school committee members. Offering compensation acknowledges the vital public, public service performed by individuals who take on the responsibility related to a range of complex educational policies in town, including the school budget. With the education of children traditionally considered the purview of women and tied to motherhood, local school boards have benefited greatly from women's active participation over the centuries. Perhaps not surprisingly, most of that work has historically gone uncompensated. So the idea is basically the reason historically that school committees haven't been paid and select boards have traditionally been paid is very much gendered is sort of the argument. Um, school committee members in Massachusetts have tended to have more women serving them on them relative to governing bodies such as city councils and select boards. Bodies are much more likely to pay those who serve on them. This brings me to my second point. Here in Arlington, service on the school committee, school board, select board, allows for a $3,000 stipend for each member and $3,500 for chairs, you guys know. In addition, there are some other elected public services positions in town that are afforded compensation, such as a three-member board of assessors that offers $4,900 to each individual serving on it, and uh, several appointed positions in town also come with compensation, such as the retirement board, um, uh, and which provides $4,500 per member. Uh, we should note that not everyone who off is offered a stipend takes one. Uh, the argument here basically is that, and I'm sorry, I'm reading her remarks. My remarks, I don't have to read from, <laughs> uh, is that um, Arlington should lead on this issue and acknowledge that the existing disparity between the two main policy bodies, the select board and the school committee, needs to be remedied. Finally, opportunities to serve should be open to all, including those for whom even a relatively small stipend might make a difference. I think about those for with limited income, single parents, young adults just gaining financial independence, individuals with non-traditional work hours, person caring for special needs children, young children, or elders. The level of compensation sought through the article, admittedly minimal by many measures, might help cover child care costs associated with meeting participation or balance. Hi, Krista, I'm reading your words. You want to finish them? <laughs> um, Sorry, might have uh, mean participation or balance out lost paid incomes to those who don't have significant caregiving needs in their family. Such stipend might make it more possible for them to commit the time needed for a school committee. So, actually, just as a personal note, when I joined the school committee, I could do so at the time I did 
only because I could leave my kids alone for an hour. I couldn't have done it a few years earlier, right? Because my partner didn't come home in time, you know, and so, so had I wanted to serve a few years earlier, I would have had to hire a babysitter. We are very fortunate that we could have accommodated that. Not everyone could easily take a volunteer non-paid position and also then pay for something like childcare. Um, Chris, do you want to read the rest? <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, so do you want to? I'm up to the school community compensation and other communities. Okay. Thank you. Pull the, pull the Krista up. Kelleher from Precinct 5. I'm a town meeting member. Sorry to be running late today. So what do we know about school committee compensation in other Massachusetts communities? I don't think we know enough, but we know something. So we wanted to offer a few data points to put this $3,000 stipend request into context. So for town meeting, a town manager, 12 communities, three municipalities that we know of offer stipends ranging from 4,500, that's Watertown, to 10,800, that's Medford. Nine do not. According to the information we have available from the Mass Association of School Committees, 16 towns currently offer compensation to school committee members. While this is an incomplete list because it's self-reported data, we don't have a complete list, we'd love to get one, maybe we can get our hands on one, but we know that there's a range of communities that offer compensation with varying stipend levels, and some of those communities offer travel reimbursement, some of them offer health insurance, buy-in, and other, um, kinds of compensation. So we know that the range between the lists we have is 200 to 10,800 with an average of about $3,020. So the provision of a $3,000 stipend to the seven members of the school committee would obviously be $21,000 annually and we obviously need to find a feasible funding source for this. But we, I feel, and I know Jennifer shares my concern to uh, hope to remedy a long-standing inequity. So as a community that places tremendous value on an inclusive town governance system and engaged civic leaders, we want to uphold the values of respect, respect, equity, and access, and hope to find a funding source for these stipends. Thank you so much. And Jennifer is going to speak a little bit to the funding source that we think would be most appropriate. So, um, so I have some remarks about how hard we work, but I don't think I need to belabor that because I think you guys know that meetings, we have many subcommittee meetings, we have, um, but another thing that makes our work especially hard and long is that the school committee is responsible for the budget. And so that means that not only do we hold budget hearings and talk, do community outreach, um, but we also, sorry, but we also serve in negotiating committees. So last year I had the pleasure of serving two negotiating committees. The first one was relative straightforward only four meetings, eight and a half hours. The second was a little more complicated, 13 meetings, 45 hours total, including one long Friday night, and the final contract was concluded at 1.30 in the morning on a Thursday, I think it was. Uh, Mr. Slickman was, here, was in that meeting as well. Uh, so, because we serve, because the budget is ours, we need to vote on the budget every year. Now, a lot of the budgetary work is done by the administration, but it's still the school committee's budget, and the school committee still does and can argue to move things around, right? Um, <coughs> so it presents an inherent conflict of interest if the money is coming from the school budget. So on one, the one hand, the school budget is large. 21000 is the cost of a TA. We can maybe not fund a large class TA and, and sort of fit that in the budget. On the other hand, it presents this conflict of interest. It also presents a practical conflict because we very, we, many times we have people come to us um, to argue for increases in something, like a large class size TA or some sort of program. And one of the things we say to them is, so the budget's really tight, we're still about 5% less than the town manager 12 communities to which we compare ourselves to per pupil. So if we add this thing that you're advocating for, what do we cut? And now, if it were in the school committee budget, the natural thing to say is, well, just cut your stipends, right? I mean, I, I want this TA. The TA is about the cost of your stipends. Um, that's a natural thing to do. Um, I also want to say that uh, school committee members who care passionately about kids, obviously they're, that's why they're there, um, when times are tough, like they were in 2010, would feel a lot of internal sort of <clears throat> desire to maybe not take their stipends or not vote for their stipends or you know, shift them in that budget. 
So what I'd like to argue is that the money should come from the warrant money, um, be, which is somewhat flexible. Um, doesn't, you know, it does, obviously it affects the long-term financial five-year plan, but it doesn't affect any particular budget, right? So it doesn't, you're not saying, let's take it from the police or the fire, which I, we certainly don't want to do. Um, so I'd like to make that point, that argument. Okay. Um, <clears throat> is there anyone else here to speak to the Appropriation School Committee member stipends? Mr. Attorney Heim. Madam Chair, I just want to add something just so the public is sort of aware of the scope of the board's role in this. This article has sort of two facets to it, which is why it has a somewhat unusual title. It says vote, and then it says appropriation. The select board is only responsible for, uh, or not responsible for, but the select board can only sort of be responsive to the idea of a vote. As you saw in the memo, there's a specific process that has to be undertaken to provide school committee members compensation under the general laws. It's really only that portion that's before the select board. The actual appropriation has to go before the finance committee. Thank you. And um, I don't know if Mr. DeCourcy or, or Attorney Heim or town manager Chapdelaine, is it appropriate for this board to take our vote first before FinCom has had their hearing? I know sometimes in the past it, that, that we've kind of run astray on that. Um, Mr. DeCourcy? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. And, well, I, actually, if Attorney Heim, if you want to comment first, I, I have a couple of thoughts on this, but uh, I'll defer to you if you want to. Well, in this particular circumstance, Madam Chair, thank you, uh, I, I don't, I, I do think that if the board is, is so inclined, it certainly may vote tonight on the matter. I think the board may also decide it would like the um, input from the uh, finance committee with respect to how it expects to finance this position. I do want to let folks know this is part of the memo, but I think it's an important part of the dis discussion that really more focuses perhaps on the true cost. Um, this type of stipend wouldn't render um, school committee members eligible for either retirement or health insurance. And so it's just important to understand the scope of what we're talking about is truly the proposed dollar value of whatever whatever the stipend is. I, I know that the manager also had some, no, I'm sorry. Mr. I mean, very quickly, I, I, given your question, Madam Chair, I mean, I would feel like the, the board should feel very comfortable uh, taking a vote on policy, which this would be, and then the Finance Committee can have their discussion about funding <clears throat> that policy. If there was a disconnect between the two, then obviously it would likely the board would want to talk about it again, but um, I don't think there's any legal matter or legal reason why the board wouldn't be able to discuss this first, just for my Mr. Take. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. And, and before you even get into that, I just have a question um, from Ms. Kelleher and Dr. Seuss. The, the, the Warren article actually talks about the stipend going into effect in fiscal year 2022. Is that still your intent? Okay, because that raises a question in my mind. Mm. We can support this, but it's subject to an appropriation every year, so really what you're coming to us a year early or, or coming to FinCom a year early on the appropriation because it, it really would be nothing to put before town meeting for the fiscal 2021 budget. Um, so I, I, I think speaking personally, I, mean, I, I understand that, that Dr. Susan, I've talked about this in the past and, and, and the concerns about school committee members not being compensated for the, for the work they do. And personally, I, I support your, your effort, but I, I think as a body, one, I think the, the Finance Committee should be the, the body that determines what, what that amount is, and, and I certainly could support going to town meeting um, and, and recommending compensation, but that compensation, I think, should be determined by the Finance Committee, and, and you've laid out reasons why the amount shouldn't be included in the school budget, and that's something that um, some communities it is, some, some it isn't. And of course, if it is included in the school budget, <clears throat> once the overall budget number is determined, you can, as a school committee can spend it, or a school department can spend it any way that they see fit. Um, so I, I think, you know, whether we vote after, or do you have a hearing scheduled with the Finance Committee? Not yet. No. Okay. But I, I do think for town council, it's the, we can't, this year's town meeting can't bind 
the fiscal 22 town meeting. So I'm just wondering what any recommendation would do under the articles written. If I, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so the way the general law is written essentially requires a vote of town meeting to take a certain action uh, to approve giving school committee members compensation and then set that compensation and when that compensation will begin. Um, I think this year's town meeting can take an action to say that we want the school committee to receive compensation and that would set the table if the intention is to go forward in 2022 20, uh, and it may be that the finance committee's vote on the quote unquote appropriation is really more of an endorsement of a future expenditure. But of course you're correct. Each budget is an individual budget and because the school budget is sort of a special budget, doesn't operate the same way that everything else does. If it ended up in the school budget, um, the finance committee would essentially be making a commitment, although not a firm one that is legally binding to begin <coughs> funding this in 2022. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Chapter Lane, then Mr. Kiro. Uh, I just listening to this, I would add, um, you know, sometimes there's an inherent awkwardness of within the fact that we submit a budget by January 15th, and then warrant articles come forward from residents sometimes seeking funding. Um, and this sort of is that case, although I actually think there is a an appropriateness to it in that town meeting could be asked this year whether or not they want to approve of just compensation in general for school committee members. And if that is approved, then that could become part of next year's budget planning cycle such that the cart and the horse are in the right order. Okay. Mr. Carroll. So I have a question and then I have a comment. So my question is just, just for clarification, this is not traditional acceptance legislation where we just take a straight vote as town meeting to accept MGL 71 section 52 and then in future years we're able to make appropriations. It's, it's actually an appropriation that's made every year pursuant. Well, I'm sorry. Article? Madam Chairman, I so what the law says, it's a little bit um, unusual in the sense that it says that town meeting has to vote on a, uh, to provide compensation and to say what the amount of such compensation will be. So it's a little bit awkward in the sense that town meeting would essentially be voting to provide compensation for the school committee members and it would be voting on what that number would be. Now, in theory, you could say we're voting to provide school committee members compensation at an amount to be set at the 20, um, 21 annual town meeting. You could certainly do that, uh, but it does require a vote of town meeting both to provide that compensation and to set what that compensation would be. In some ways, it's making it sound a little bit more complicated than it really is because our town meeting always votes on appropriations as recommended by the finance committee. Yeah. It's just a little bit odd because of the timing that we've already discussed. Okay. And then my, my comment, and I, I think um, Dr. Seuss actually addressed a lot of it. I, I feel like I'm in kind of a unique position here, having served in both of these um, these roles. Um, you know, I, Dr. Seuss is on her way off the school committee. I don't, I don't think you'll ever find a sitting school committee member come up looking for a, a, a stipend, just like us. We don't do this for the stipends. And I know that the school committee members don't do it for the, for the, for the stipends. Um, I think that Dr. Seuss actually covered a lot of the, the, the particular um, areas. I mean, there's a difference between the two jobs. So we tend here, we tend to work with a very large um, variety of uh, constituencies, and as such, we tend to also be invited to a lot of events, a lot of out-of-pocket expenses come with that, and I, I think that, that that's, I know that myself, that's, that's where a lot of the stipend comes into. And working with so many constituencies, we also deal with a lot of written correspondence. There's a lot of written correspondence to the school committee, too. But we, we have correspondence from a lot of um, um, dif different areas. I think the uh, speaker addressed appropriately, though, that the type of um, work that school committees have, the budgeting is very real. The subcommittees are very real, and the and the, the negotiations, the direct negotiations, where we're able, 
we have the luxury of delegating that to the manager are very real. I mean, I'll one-up you. I mean, I was on a negotiation that went, I think, 33 sessions, and there were like two or three hours a piece at least. So that was, um, it was a lot of time. And um, although we do sometimes have select board members like Mr. Hurd, who have young, young children, um, it, it tends to be more common on the school committee where you have um, school committee members and, and a lot of times moms with, with young children. And I've been at subcommittee meetings where members have had to actually bring their children and have them you know, sit in the, the corner or whatnot. And I think that having um, the stipend to, to help enable things like um, babysitting expenses and such is, is appropriate. Um, you know, um, so I completely support this in, in principle. It does sound like we have a lot of mechanics that, that, that uh, have to be taken, but I, I would feel comfortable, you know, moving uh, that, that this board, you know, express its support for the proposition of, of um, compensating school committee members under um, um, the provisions of MGL Chapter 71, Section 52, um, you know, subject to annual appropriation as, um, you know, jointly determined by the, the Finance Committee and the School Committee. Mr. Hurd? Yep. So as you say, when I first read this article, to me, it was a no-brainer because I've never. Read, I know the school committee puts in a ton of work and often has meetings that are quite longer than ours. And I've never really been able to wrap my head around why we got the stipend, other than it's just historically been the case, and the school committee didn't. Um, my first inclination was to say tonight that I thought it'd be more appropriate to hear from the finance committee because it fell out of order, but. I mean, as we talk this through, you know, I'm more than comfortable if the vote's going to be to support the, the notion that the school committee should get paid, and even that that's the number is fine with me, um, just to the extent that we're not endorsing a funding source, because it's just not, I think it's premature to talk about that with this board before it's gone through the appropriate avenues. Mm -hmm. But I'm comfortable, you know, endorsing the idea that the school committee should get paid. And, you know, this is the number put forth, and you know, th that number will have to go to town meeting for approval, so. Okay, I guess I, I, what I'd say is I'm gonna be, um, and Mr. Schluckman is next in the queue, I, I apologize. I'm very uncomfortable, and I guess I would ask in the future, any joint uh, select board and, and fin finance committee articles, I'd like finance committee, um, unless for some reason they say, select board go ahead because we've kind of traditionally done that in the past because when I first got on the board that wasn't happening and it, I think it created a non-issue that didn't need to so I, I guess I mean I was going to say I'd, I'd prefer to wait until finance committee but I'll, 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 I'm happy to go along with the majority but I'd maybe make sure any other joint ones that finance committee um, and that's not to say that if this had gone to finance committee and they didn't support it that I would say well then I'm not supporting it either because I, I do support this you know a hundred percent you know when I first ran for then board of selectmen now select board I assumed it was like school committee and when I got on and I'm like we get paid and I'm like I just assume since the school committee who works just as hard and more times often than not harder labor intensive wise um, than the then Board of Selectmen, now Select Board. It, it just always baffled me why there was the disparity. So um, I guess I'm going to take that just a moment, Mr. Hart. Question for clarification. When this goes to the Finance Committee, are they going to just approve based on the wording of the, the article, or are they going to have to <coughs> discuss funding sources? Madam Chair? Ms. Attorney Hyam. I think what the Finance Committee will essentially be voting on, and I, I want to let you know that I have discussed the matter with the Chair of the Finance Committee. Um, I think that what essentially will have be is sort of like an approval of a concept, right? That you're basically, the Finance Committee would give its endorsement to finding $3,000 per member in 2022. And that the scope of their vote would essentially be that the amount is feasible and appropriate. Um, and they would probably have some discussion of what that funding source is be, although I don't know that it has to be in the vote 
for this specific town meeting. And if the board would like it to come back, you know, after that happens, I think that that, that would be appropriate. Mr. Chaplain. Just out of an abundance of clarity, uh, the, f the finance committee it would always be the body that determines where funds are to be raised from. Mm -hmm. So um, probably not this year because it's not being asked for in FY21, but next year, if they disagreed with uh, Dr. Seuss's recommendation, they but, but agreed with paying school committee members, they could put it into the school budget and adopt a school budget that was $21,000 higher. Or they could say it should come out of the select board's budget, right, and, and, and include it in, in that document. Or, as Dr. Seuss recommended, they could say this standalone warrant article, which includes $21,000 for school committee pay, is just that, a standalone warrant article. But it, would, it will run through the finance committee one way or the other. I'm just wondering, are, are we going to have to redo this process again next year? I'm like, is it, we're not we're get, getting some work done. Okay, Mr. Schlickman. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Uh, I don't want to take a position on the article per se as a school committee member, but I just want to underline a, a very correct statement that Dr. Seuss made in that school committee members are not employees of the school district. We are officers of the town. So the funding of this, should town meeting choose to do so, is a town side obligation in my view and should not be on in a school budget. And that's all I have to say. Okay. Okay. Um, first, I need a, and I think we're clear on select board and finance committee articles. Traditionally, they, they go first. There's been the rare occasion where it's been more of a policy decision than a, a appropriations decision where finance committee chair has asked the then board of selectmen. And I don't think it's happened as a select board. So uh, is there a second to Mr. Kiro's motion? Second. Seconded by Mr. Hurd. Any further questions? Yeah, and I, I just, Mr. DeCourcy? Yeah, I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Thank you. I, and I just wanted to make sure, I, I think we're all on the same page here, but Mr. Kira was talking about supporting compensation, but we're not taking a vote on the amount of the compensation. I didn't put it, I, in right. my motion, I didn't put a, right. a, a, okay, a number good. or a okay. source. Because I, I do think, mm -hmm. I think that policy question it's appropriate not to have the amount and you know finance committee can have the discussion and then um this will play out this year as, as, as well as next year okay um any further questions or comments if not on a motion by mr carroll seconded by mr hurt all those in favor say aye aye, aye. All those opposed unanimous vote thank you so much and we i hope you, you got the message that you, this should have happened many years ago <laughs> Okay, um, we will now return to uh, bylaw amendment regulation of outdoor lighting, up lighting. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, when we presented the outdoor lighting ordinance last year, there was a last minute amendment to change the uh, up lighting. Uh, this, I believe, has an unintended consequence. And as a result, I want to bring it back before town meeting not as an advocate for a position, but as an advocate for the town meeting's ability to think about this and make a decision on their own. As you know, a lot of the lighting that we banned in uh, the warrant article last year, as we uh, amended the bylaw, are these large flat panel sodium vapor lights that are used for architectural lighting, including basically mostly funeral homes and churches. We have now taken away their ability to do architectural lighting through that means, and by not allowing them to uplight, we're, uh, we're taking away another opportunity for them to, impo uh, to impose architectural lighting on their facilities. So the question is to town meeting, is that their intent? Do they not want to allow up lighting for architectural purposes on businesses and churches, or do they want to prohibit it? Uh, and that's why the article's here to give town meeting a chance to clarify the vote from last year. I'm happy regardless of the way the town meeting votes, but I think the town meeting deserves the opportunity to think about this and make a decision on this little element of the uh, bylaw. I agree in terms of unintended consequences. Um, 
Any, um, is anyone else here to speak on this Warren article? No. Nope. Um, Mr. DeCourcy? Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's a question on the, the proposed language um, you use structures, um, and I'm just wondering, if there's no definition of structure in the bylaw that concerns uplighting, but there is a definition of structures in the town zoning bylaw, which mm -hmm. is very, very broad. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering, was your intent to deal with buildings? Because buildings is a much narrower definition in the zoning bylaw, and it, it, I'm just concerned with the definition of structures. It, that, that could include a fence, it could in, include a pole. Mm -hmm. um, would building maybe be more precise in what you were looking at? Because the, the picture you sent to us was of a, of a church. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah, uh, ultimately I'm interested in the building. Okay. Um, I, as I said, I'm, I'm somewhat agnostic on this, but I think that the town meeting should have a right to decide it. So I wrote the warrant article to give sufficient scope to allow for uh, the buildings to be lit. And a uh, recommended vote that restricts it to building uh, is totally appropriate. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions or comments, Mr. Hurd? So now that among the exceptions will be structures for commercial pr purposes, so for the most part, do you just envision that the bylaw will cover residential properties? Uh, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't apply to residential property under the terms of the bylaw. Uh, it, there really aren't any residential properties right now that are lit in manners that hit, were changed by the imposition of the new bylaw. So basically, we're looking at businesses and churches that have been uh, impacted by uh, the, the new law. Okay. Okay. Uh, at this point, uh, motion by one of my colleagues. Full favorable action. Moved by Mr. Second. Carroll, or seconded by Mr. Hurd. Any further questions, yeah. Mr. Okay. I, I, I'd like to offer a, an amendment to the proposed vote substituting building for structures in, in both of the exceptions because I, I, I just think that structures is too broad and the exceptions will overtake the, uh, what, what, what you're looking to do. So in the, the two instances that are added, um, rather than structures used for religious purposes and structures used for commercial purposes, I'd propose that buildings um, is substituted in both <laughs> instances. I would draw my motion and I'll make a new motion that uses, substitutes the word uh, building for uh, structures. It's still seconded by Mr. Second. Hurd. Madam uh, Attorney Heim. Madam Chair, if I could just clarify something. Is it, just for the purpose of the comments piece, piece of this, is it the board's perspective that you're recommending favorable action because you concur that this conversation should be at town meeting? Or is it that you are urging town meeting to adopt this change? My personal feeling would be um, for what this was presented for that we're encouraging the conversation for town meeting. Was this an unintended consequence or was it not? Okay. Um, but I, do my colleagues agree with I that? I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. And, yes. and thank you for clarifying that. I didn't, um, so um, with that, um, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hurd, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, at the point of new business, which is pretty much the end of our meeting, um, was this gentleman, were you here for anything? No. Okay, that's fine. No, I just feel bad if you were. Okay. Of course, you were here to sit and, and enjoy the whole meeting. Uh, new business, Ms. Marr. No new business. Attorney Heim. No new business. Town Manager Chapdelaine. Just uh, two pieces of new business. One, uh, I think as the board knows, we are coming close to concluding our police chief uh, search and recruitment process. We actually did the final interviews today. Uh, it was two, um, th maybe three weeks ago now. Uh, we did an assessment center for the three candidates. Last Thursday, uh, we held interviews with a group of community stakeholders that had been outlined to the board in the memo outlining the process uh, several months ago. And then today, did final panel interviews with myself, the deputy town manager, the human resources director, and the police chief from Chelsea, Massachusetts, uh, who's a well-respected chief both in the region and statewide. And we'll uh, hopefully be making a decision within the next day or two and be publicly announcing that, but I just want to let the board know very very soon we'll have a permanent police chief in place, so we're, we're excited about that. 
Uh, and then next, I just wanted to mention to the board, we've, um, Town Council and I both have uh, received some inquiries from uh, parties that have secured properties and would like to have a chance at proposing to the board opening the, uh, the third recreational marijuana dispensary that would be allowed under the board's um, three licenses. So with the board's approval at a future meeting, we'll bring back a draft RFP for the board to put out for applicants to apply uh, if, if the board's not opposed to that. Okay. okay. That sounds good. Thank you for That's informing us. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I uh, just want to mention last Thursday, I had the pleasure of going to the badge pinning ceremony at the fire station. There are six new firefighters. Two firefighters were promoted to lieutenant. Two firefighters promoted to captain and, and one to chief. And um, you talk about both police and fire having to be ready on, on day one of, of the job. So the two new firefighters, one of them, a firefighter, Michael Flynn, delivered a baby on his first day on the oh, job. Uh, and um, firefighter Nagara was in group two and uh, fought the fire at 12 Bowden Street, which was, which was last Tuesday. And, and uh, that, that was a, a very serious situation. And, and um, I, I want to commend the fire department because it was a, I actually came in, back into Arlington just after it had started and it, it was raging. So um, I, I just want to point that out, congratulate the new firefighters and commend the firefighters for, for all the work that they, they do for the town. Absolutely. Yes, thank you. I felt bad I couldn't make that. Um, Mr. Hurd? Yep. Sorry, I was sick this week, so I was trying to get this on the agenda, but I, a couple weeks ago, I attended a meeting with select board members from Lincoln, Lexington, Bedford, and Concord to start talking about the semi-quincentennial celebration in April of 2025, which seems far away. So I'll, probably, I'll put this on a future agenda to go into the details and what we have to do, but believe it or not, we have to start getting ready for uh, the events that will be around you know, Patriots Day in 2025. They spoke of such things as the then President of the United States attending or someone, some surrogate from the White House. So that will be on a future agenda, but it was a very interesting talk, to say the least. Thank you. Mr. Carroll. We can all learn to say semi-quincentennial. Semi-quincentennial. Semi Got it. <laughs> Semi-quincentennial. Uh, so someone said that was hot. <laughs> uh, Mr. Carroll. Uh, no new business. Thank you. Um, just a few people have asked me within the past week. Um, it's sort of along the lines of the request coming in for the third um, medical, medical recreational marijuana uh, shop with uh, Prime Butcher relinquishing their license, is it that um, the board has to make a decision to announce that that license is available and or where it is available geographically, or is it similar to the previous request that this board takes it up if and when um, uh, a business establishment in Arlington expresses an interest? And if it's, there's no answer tonight, you can let us know in an email. I mean, I would say I think it's the board's prerogative. Right. It's, it's purely within the board's discretion. Um, I think that the circumstances are so different that it probably merits a discussion about how you would prefer to do that. Mm -hmm. um, because the last time, to my understanding, I don't, think I, was, I don't think I was here, the last time there was a competitive process for a license, um, if I'm not mistaken. Was there a competitive process for this in the last six years? No, that's, I think it, that goes all the way back before Doug when, mm -hmm. and then. You're saying when the all alcohol. When we had like four or five. Remember, remember when there was two new licenses and Johnny's Food Master came in and right. Brian Butcher came in, we had like That the four. first initial, um, I don't want to say onslaught, but applications, uh, there were more than. I'm sure, yeah, yeah, when they yeah, first opened. Yeah. I'd be happy to research the matter, though, and, yeah. and, and if you and could. But what I'm basically what I've been telling people, and I said I would check back with my colleagues on the board and t town council and the town manager. Um, I'm of the mind that, um, unfortunately, that business is going, if not gone, out of business, and that until something comes, um, some sort of communication request consideration um, comes to the select board, um, 
that then myself or whoever is the chair when it comes in will discuss with the select board, you know, how they want to proceed, which would be, you know, yes, we want to offer it, let's open it up and open the process, no, we don't want to, or whatever. So I, I think, because it is kind of an iffy thing, it could be done either way. So if, is that okay with everybody in terms of, I didn't consider, uh, one business asked me, you know, sort of as a generality, and I said, um, I said the process isn't really defined, so um, that I, I would check into it. But you know, I just basically said if that, that's something they wanted to explore, go ahead, and you know, and that's why I raise it now. If that particular business um, avails themselves of the opportunity and or any others, uh, Mr. Hurd, has the license come back to us yet? Just because the business closed? Because I assume if they paid the fee for the year, then they have. But they don't own the license. They can't. I don't, to, to my recollection, there has I not I guess, do we have the ability to open it up now just because the store is closed? Ashley, do you know if they renewed it in January? They did. I didn't renew it. They, I, yeah. they did renew in January, she just said. Yeah. They did, yeah. Because for a year, wouldn't they, if they so chose, be able to, you know, try to sell the business? Madam Chair, sure, I just I don't want to get too far afield yep. of, new of, business. Of, 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 of the open meeting line or new business. Mm -hmm. But just as a point of information, I think that the board has always taken the position in Arlington that the license is not transferable by a sale without a very explicit series of things happening. The most recent transfer was as part of a sale of the business at the same location. Um, so. I'd be happy to detail yeah. that further. Which I board. mean, yeah. put it off for discussion, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, but kind of just so you can have the background material, so if and when we have that discussion, yeah. we can explore that. And if, if anything, um, uh, email from the town manager, Attorney Heim, if any of us think of anything else that would be an additional question, we'll contact you individually and, and ask you to comment on that. Um, should the needs arise. And that would be my only new business, so on a motion to adjourn by? So moved. Mr. Kiro, second, second. by Mr. Hurd, all those in favor say aye. 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 Are those opposed? Unanimous vote. Our next meeting will be Monday, February 24th, 2020 at 7.15 p.m. Thank you.